Took a little grab car, 25 minutes, about $5, half the price if you take one of those tuk-tuks. So what you think? You excited? Of course. You're reading up on it? Yeah, I, I'm really waiting. That's actually a great tip. People need to, to look into stuff before they visit it. My favorite thing is listening to podcasts about like a city or about uh, a certain historical experience. Um, then when you go in there, you can really live and see it and, and learn about it all. And not just like, oh, get a couple photos, but you really get the whole picture. There's so many times I've been to places and all of a sudden I read about it after the fact. I'm like, damn, I didn't even notice that piece in there or what that meant. And now I want to go back, right? So always do your research beforehand. That helps out big time. Okay, so most of the exhibit was basically they had these uh, headphones, which gave you a lot of information. Here. Then you could read these little things. They were kind of showing it what it looked like before it was all destroyed. Obviously, a lot of the evidence was taken away. And uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I think what's really interesting and unique about the whole Pol Pot and Khmer Rouge is like if you had soft hands, if you had glasses, if you'd ever spent any time in the city, if you spoke a foreign language, boom take you to the killing fields bang I think it was one out of four people during that time were killed maybe even more because it was three out of eight I can't do math but uh, yeah they were trying to go back to a pure Agarian type society with which is what the Khmer Empire back in what the ninth eighth century was like was like so they're trying to basically like reinvent it by going back to how they lived and doing that you had to get rid of all the intellectuals you know all the people that uh, aren't about that farm life and living like that. Pretty wicked. What's really sad too is that uh, when the bombs came, because America bombed this place during the Vietnam War, uh, a lot of the villages were hit. And so the people fled to somewhat bigger cities for safety. And even if they did that, that was considered a city dweller and they were rounded up and taken out. Of course, like a lot of these genocidal campaigns, many people were turned against each other and you could spare your life if you ratted on others or said that they were a spy or that they did this, they did that, to get in good favor. Huh, sounds quite familiar. The last couple years during our little thing that happened, people tattletaling. Remember you could send photos of people not behaving properly and get uh, awards from the government. After that, I could definitely see how things like this happen is people lose their mind and they'll do anything to be in the good graces of, of whoever the daddy is in charge. Damn, so that's wicked. Not only do they ban religion, they ban commerce, they ban education. They were saying like men had to stay with men, women had to stay with women. Like your only thing you had was the state. But that's fascinating. You know, even in uh, the Soviet Union, they still had commerce. They had crazy industry. They developed places like maniacs but here it was like literally bring us back to the farming ages and that's all that matters so check this out this was used to cut prisoners throats these trees are all over Cambodia oh. see it's got those little spikes but that would be a brutal way to get cut I think that would take a while for it to slice through and it'd be long and painful. It's said about 20,000 that got killed and put in here. It's one of like 300 killing fields. One of 300 killing fields. I've heard about this before in other genocides that bullets get too expensive so they resort to using other methods. Here's some. Damn, even Pol Pot banned money and personal possessions. Stripped everything from everyone. So you're all equal, you're all the same. But I mean, the communists, you had your own personal stuff. I visited some like old uh, communist homes in Sofia, Bulgaria, like a museum. And they had a bunch of different own things, but in Cambodia it was, you have nothing. That's crazy. Yeah, so in three years since the day he walked into Pompeii, conquered it, uh, three million out of eight million Cambodians died, starved, or were tortured. That's bananas.
I remember learning about this in school, but obviously not to the level as the the Holocaust. You know, in American schools, you have a huge like semester almost. I think of learning about that. But what's crazy is this happened, you know, 40 years ago, and the effects are for sure still prevalent, right? And what's really interesting, see this little audio thing, is obviously at this time they had a lot more technology, so they're recounting the stories, and you know they had people recorded that were part of, you know, Pol Pot's regime. So it's a lot more detailed, I guess, than when you see the Holocaust. It's more, you know, photos and some kind of grainy videos because the technology back then and obviously you have the interviews from the Holocaust survivors but uh, it seems to me there's a lot more like recorded um, history about this event because it happened you know very recently in the scale of history so this little audio guide is, is quite fascinating they, they did a good job with it okay so right here a bunch of uh, mass graves as you can see have been dug up Remember, there are thousands and thousands of these throughout the country, some inaccessible because of uh, landmines from the past. When it's rainy season, they continue to find, you know, bones and fragments of the dead. That's when the Khmer Rouge was driven out. They hid uh, in the border of Thailand in the jungle, and they were still considered the legitimate government of Cambodia because the Vietnamese um, we're obviously at war with the rest of the first world or first world countries because of the communism, right? So even the United States, United Kingdom, France, everybody considered Pol Pot's regime that was in the jungle now as like the the seat at the table in the UN. And he even went to New York and had meetings when he was in exile, and they heard about these crimes. That's so how much, obviously. <clears throat> The United States especially was fighting communism that they wouldn't legitimize Vietnamese, uh, their new control of uh, Cambodia. Wicked. Damn, they were even given financial aid from these countries and Pol Pot lived for another 20 years until he got sick and died. So that's the killing tree, they call it. They would smash babies' heads against it, like throw them at it. This is uh, the baby grave and the woman grave. They found like a hundred bodies of them here. Brutal. It's wicked at what people can do when they're in some sort of psychosis. That's uh, so right behind there is the magic tree. What they do, they put speakers up here, blast revolutionary music and uh, supposedly it was to drown out the sounds of people moaning and dying and getting killed. So hopefully I can find uh, those tracks on YouTube and put them in here because I hear them right now on the, the headphones. It's uh, Twilight Zone-ish. Creepy. Alright, now we're going to the big stupa where they have, looks like skulls and the memories of the people who died here. Yeah, so it says no photo right there, but they said I could record. Um, I don't mean any disrespect whatsoever. Um, I hope this actually shows you the craziness of people and that we don't forget it. And obviously remembering all the ones who passed away during this, all the families that were affected. It's just very, very sad. So they put little dots on the skulls and it shows how they were killed. And you see all the different ways. It says victims under 20 years old. Wow. Yeah, that's intense. But yeah, I went to Auschwitz. And obviously that is very impactful. But, you know, in, in the museum or when you go inside, the, take the tour, they show you the suitcases and like the hair and whatnot, but you don't see rows and rows of skulls like you did there. And that, uh, you know, you can see the young skulls too, like the under 20. Whew. Wow.
Right, so this is the genocide museum and obviously they killed people here as well. It's more in the city center. Um, yeah, it used to be a school too. And they converted it into you know, like headquarters, torturing, imprisonment. It's a bunch of these rooms here. Pol Pot. So this is interesting, it's showing the routes the Khmer Rouge took to overtake Cambodia. Here are all the comrades that uh, were a part of the Khmer Rouge. Do not look like uh, nice people. Notice how young a lot of them look. It's crazy. Look at this person. Wow. So twice a day the people got some rice some boiling rice and they said you could almost count the number of grains in the rice that's what they got to eat each day shackles the prisoners Now this one looks like a torture. Oh wow, yeah, look at that. Okay, so here's where they kept uh, a lot of the prisoners. They had their little bedroom. Wait till you see it. It uh, wouldn't be a great prison cell. I don't know how you stay in that. This whole building just had lines and rows of these. This photo really hit me hard. I mean, look at the little baby and how young that lady is. This is how they got showers. Once during his three months in detention, he got a shower like this. Cutting his hands, uh, fingers, waterboarding. Oh my God! It's his n nipple, pinching his nipple off. Right, so that dude was here, he had the photos and he had some books and, and whatnot and then they went to, I think they found the guy that was running this prison right here, the one we're in, like the commander that, uh, the Khmer Rouge who was the like, warden basically up here and they met in court and the guy denied everything of course and then he was testifying against them. And so I'm gonna wrap this video up, I hope you learned something. Um, it's very heartbreaking. The Cambodian people have been so friendly to me so far and to see what kind of brutal past they have had is just really, really sad. I know for sure it has reinforced my beliefs about the old communist type people and overreaching government. I, for one, will not bend over for them like many of the Cambodians that... Uh, stood up against Pol Pot and the regime. I very much respect that. It is very inspiring, and I definitely won't uh, let your sacrifice go to waste the next time the clowns try doing it again. Everyone have a great, beautiful day, and make sure to live bold.